Hi, I'm Matt Schell. In this video, I wanna show you a new tool for Unity that I'm working on called Strata. Strata is a procedural generation toolkit that works for people who are interested in doing procedural generation but don't know how to program. It works with Unity's 2D tile map features, so you can draw in chunks of content and then have them built into randomly generated levels by Strata. So let's look at our first example, which is a procedural platformer. So here we have our character in our level and she can run around in this generated world. And so what we've done is we've generated a contiguous sequence of rooms. So a connected sequence of rooms that will take us from an entrance to an exit. So here in this case, super jump, in this case, here's our exit room with the, uh, the three waterfalls. So our entrance room is here and then our exit room is here and the other rooms here, you can see, for example, these rooms are not actually connected. These are just filled in randomly, right? So we generate a critical path that the player needs to be able to traverse to get to the exit and then we fill the rest of the room randomly. So some are connected and some are not. And it's up to you to decide how much interconnection or uh, you know how much space and so on that you wanna leave. So let's take a look at how this looks without our randomly filled in room. So we can see the path by itself. So I'm gonna turn off here, fill empty space and regenerate. So I'm currently using a seed. So it's always gonna generate the same sequence right now. We can of course randomize the seed and we also have support for daily challenge style seeding. So here you can see just the critical path being generated, right? So this is the path that the player needs to follow uh, in order to beat the level. Um, but then when we fill in the random rooms, we get something which looks more complex, which is basically just a bunch of these random room templates throughout the level. So let's take a look at, for example, the first room. I'm gonna load it into my editor window here and click load room. And this loads it here in our tile map editor. Now I'm just gonna take, for example, my, uh, my rule tile here that allows me to draw these kind of bricks and make a change, right? Let's make like a bigger, more dramatic change just so it's really visible. And then I'm going to save that to the room and when I regenerate my level, we can see that the change has been applied, right? So we can edit in the tile map, save that data. What it does is it saves it to an array of ASCII characters, letters and numbers basically and then allows us to reload it at runtime, right? This also works in edit mode. We can generate in edit mode if we wanna work offline with our data. You can also save this entire level as a template. If you wanted to do some more hand, large hand authored chunks, you could do that. So this is all using a single, what we call generator in Strata, right? So this is our platformer room chain generator. And that's the only thing that's generating this level right now. Let's take a look at another example. In this case, it's a top-down roguelike example that uses multiple generators for a more complex approach. So we're gonna go over to our mini rogue demo here. This is using some awesome sprites by Arachne. Uh, that's her website there, retinaleclipse.com. Check her out. She's really cool. Okay, so if we enter play mode here, we can see here is our generated level. So we have multiple passes happening here to generate this level. So we've got a, first of all, let's take a look at our profile. Okay, so what we can see here is we're using a multi-pass generation approach. So let's select the board generation profile and I'm just gonna lock it in this second inspector here because we're gonna refer back to it a lot. So in this case, we're using seven different generators to generate this. One of them is a room chain similar to the room chain we were using in the other one, but it starts basically in the center of the level and generates a, a chain. So in this case, if we wanna see the path, the traversable path here, in this case, we're not randomly filling the level. So here is our start room, we go up, across, down, 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 and then across this way, right? And that's our, our critical path, right? So we could place our exit, let's say over here if we wanted to. So 
the what we're doing, right? Let's actually go through this step by step. So I am going to temporarily shorten the length of my array to one and hit zero to regenerate. So these are all scriptable objects, right? So we can edit in play mode and make changes. We don't have to enter and exit play mode if we don't want to. So the first pass is we do a, we run a cellular automata algorithm to generate this kind of cave-like shape, right? And this fills in the base layer of the map. And then we're basically gonna draw more stuff on top of that. Okay, so let's undo our change. And then let's look at our next pass, which is that we scatter grass into the empty space. So we have these little grass tiles. This is just a totally random scatter. The only rule here is that we don't overwrite filled tiles, right? We only go into empty space. Okay. So we lay down our grass. Then we have some lakes that we lay down, right? Now these are just these large blobby rooms. I'll show you the template. Uh, this is the lake. There's our lake, right? And if we wanted to, even while we're in play mode, we can make some changes to it. Let's say we put a, put a big island in the middle of it and maybe like a path to get there, which probably won't be reachable, but that's okay. And then we can save that. So these are all scriptable objects, right? So we can load them, save them, do what we want. Uh, and then let's regenerate by pressing zero. And now we can see, right, there's our, our peninsula has been cut into the lake, right? So. We have our lake pass. Okay, let's go to four. And what are we doing at four? At four, oh, we're just putting up the wall border. We can't really see it here. We're just building a border around the level, not so interesting. Let's go to five. At five, I think we put down the room chain. Yeah, so five, we actually carve out the room chain here. So we're carving out our a bunch of room templates, right? Again, each of these is a scriptable object with this pattern, and we're doing a connected pass through. Then at six, we are tunneling. So, okay. So here we can see we're tunneling from, and the tunneler has some different um, settings. We could have it go just randomly. We could also have it tunnel from the last strata layer. So in this case, what it's doing is it's looking for anything that's flagged with generates empty space and which in this case is, for example, the cellular, cellular automata. And then it's dr digging out tunnels to connect them, right? This makes sure that our room chain and our cellular automata at some point will be connected, right? And so it's making a connection here, here, it's digging through this wall here. Looks like there's a couple other connections between the room chain itself. This I think was already there. So it's making some additional connections. And this is just to make sure that we don't end up with big chunks of our map, like let's say this whole cave system being totally inaccessible. Okay, and then the last is this entrance and exit placer. So this just takes two characters. Uh, in this case, the exit character is three and the player character is B. Those are randomly generated when we, when we auto generate the board, but you can also go in and set them manually if you want. And if we take a look, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the map of contiguous space, right, all the connected space, and pick two random spots in it. So in this, in this case, it's placed our wizard here and our stairs down to the next level there. So that is the final, the final pass. Now, of course, right, we could, these levels are kind of boring, they're just shapes, right? We could draw in all kinds of monsters and gold and traps and things in these, whatever whatever we wanted. We could randomly spawn monsters and treasure, all kinds of additional possibilities for generators. But here you have a kind of a basic kit of sort of procedural painting tools, right? So you can use these generator tools to generate these kind of maps of data. You can save them and edit them if you want. Of course, you can generate them at runtime in your game, edit the chunks, all kinds of stuff. So hopefully this gives you some cool ideas for your game. I would love to hear any comments, feedback, feature requests, anything like that. I'm trying to get this finished soon to a kind of an early version to release out to the asset store and maybe some other storefronts sometime in the coming few weeks, but I would love to hear what you think. And I also have another video that I'm putting up on the channel that's a slightly different uh, version of basically setting this whole level up 
from scratch, creating the tile map, everything, so that you can see what that looks like if you're curious. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. If you found this to be cool, if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, that helps the content to get discovered on YouTube, and I would appreciate it very much. And thanks so much for watching.